All right, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Dove's Forge. Today, we're going to be making a simple honey knife out of 1095. Uh, this is going to be episode one. So next week, we're going to do episode two. In this episode, we are going to forge out the blade, establish the bevel, the handle, distill taper, clean it up on the belt sander, heat treat, and temper. And that'll be it for today. Stay tuned. start out and what most will think is the cutting portion which or this right here is the uh, knife which is wrong it's pretty much flip-flop so this is gonna be your bevel and what happens is when you start banging away on metal here on both sides it'll cause this section of the metal to rise up because when you smack metal one way, it has to go another direction. If I hit it here, it wants to go here, right? So what happens is, is that your point ends up coming up. If I would have smacked it here, then we'd have a nice banana. So in the end run, once I get to here, and I got this sharp corner, then I'm gonna round it and then start beveling so that way it makes a nice knife shape. This is the final step after you get done with establishing the tip, getting it brought down, taking care of that high spot. So now what I'll do is I'll go to my fancy fancy ruler and pretty much I've got a four and a quarter uh, face, so kind of debating. Make this a three or five inch blade. Hey, let's make it a five inch blade. So I'm going to establish five inches. If I can do this, <laughs> so I'm gonna bring this about right here. Put this on the near side of my anvil, 
and then I'm gonna establish kind of like the set or, or a mark of where I'm wanting my blade to start and then for my ricasso and then for my handle. So I'll bring it over here to the far side because y'all remember in the last video, the far side of the anvil moves the most material. So this will just help me establish a little bit deeper uh, uh, spot. And now remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is high carbon, so even though I am establishing a spot, I don't want to get too crazy with it, just in case you know it cracks, gets any stress fractures or anything of that nature. Now what I want to do, without dropping anything, is I'm pretty much going to take my soapstone and I'm going to go about a half inch for the ricasso and then I'm going to go uh, four and a half inches for this handle. Now, even though I'm marking that four and a half inches, once I hot cut it, then I bring it down to about an inch and then I do a nice taper, a nice palm swell. I'll gain some more, which is fine, but I do about four and a half inches just in case I want to change things up or something doesn't work. Um, it just gives me a little extra playroom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop, I'll put my uh, hot cut tool in here, establish a quick mark, set it back in the forge, hot cut it, and then forge the thing. All right, y'all, I wanna talk about my giveaway event real quick while my metal is heating up. So if you follow me on Instagram, or if you don't, go to done underscore forge, or underscore forge. Like, subscribe, follow. Go to my recent post, I've got a giveaway coming up on Marine Corps birthday, November 10th, and Veterans Day, November 11th. Rules are really easy. You have to follow me, go to that post, and tag three people, all right? That'll give you one entry. Now, on that post is my website, dunsforge.com. I'll have everything in the description. If you go onto my website, and if you browse, you look up my merchandise, you look up uh, any, any of my fabulous wear I got going on, my mugs, my hoodies, my hats, whatever the case is, for every $25 you spend, that will give you one other entry. So now until November 6th, I'm gonna tally up all the entries, and then on November 6th, I will put it into a pot, and I'm gonna draw five names. First prize will, will receive this custom knife that I'm making, along with a leather sheet, and then the winner can have initials if that person chooses, also with a couple merchandise. Second prize will receive a bottle opener or a fire poker, along with their selected merchandise. Third, fourth, and fifth place winners will receive either a hat or a shirt. So, if you're really interested and you want to go get, get a giveaway, go to Dunce underscore Forge on Instagram, follow, tag three people, do all the necessary stuff. Also, 20% of all proceeds from now until November 6th will go to help out a certain veteran organization. I haven't yet decided if it's gonna be a Zipper 5 Fund or, or some other veteran organization out there. Um, I am talking to a certain individual uh, and he has a charity in mind. We'll see what we all think about. Um, so if you're interested, go to the description, look for my Instagram, follow, all that good stuff. All right. saw me do is I just hot cut off the excess material for the uh, tank. So now I have the size tank I want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about a half inch from where I marked for the blade. And I'm just going to establish a wee bit. Just establishing 
want to bring this in to about an inch before I do the palm swell and the uh, distal taper. So now what I'm doing, I like to bring this style knife down to an inch thickness from where the ricasso and the first finger, finger joint is. Bring it down to an inch thickness or a width and then I'll do my palm swell and my distal taper. So start with a 3 16 Now we're still pretty much the same thickness. You want to avoid the mushrooming, so that's why you want to, uh, once you uh, forge it down, you want to make sure you flatten out both sides to keep that the same thickness. Oh, hi. Oh, hey. So, if you're curious, I got Dunn's Forge bottles right here on my website. You should uh, check it out and hit me up. They uh, mighty. Mighty refreshing. All right, so now what I'm doing, I got the handle to the uh, width that I like. So I'm gonna take my cross beam here. And pretty much what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, stretch that material now this way to help with that palm swell. You can see, and I know 3 16 is kind of hard to tell, but, but between 3 16 and distilling it down to about an eighth inch to a little bit less. So that way I got the thickest part is up here near where the Ricasso is, and it, it will taper down to the end of the tang and then taper down to the end of the tip of the knife or tip, tip of the blade. So that way it serves as a couple functions. It serves as the aesthetic look of that knife. And it also serves as, say, for your bigger knives, if you're going to chopping or anything, it allows for that, uh, the, the shock of that metal to travel up to the thicker part and then to dissipate out the thinner part. So it's, a, it's a aesthetic aesthetic look and also a very good function to your piece. As I finish it up, then what I'll do is uh, I'll come back and critique it. Right, heat this back up. Heat that back up and then I'll cut that excess off. Paper coming down from the center down to the uh, end of, of the handle and like I said as I start working the bevel uh, when I finish I will go ahead and refine the whole knife get it all ready for a little grinding drilling holes and then heat treat all right y'all so for my makers out there from other YouTube channel uh, uh, gals and uh, guys and gals um, I have a couple stickers here 
This is my updated logo with uh, welding and metal fabrication. And this is last year's logo with just a done scorch. I'm a big sticker guy. I'm also a big flag guy. As I got Old Glory flying right there, my Irish flag in the window, and my Marine Corps flag behind my workbench. Uh, if anybody is interested in getting some stickers from me, comment down below. I'll private message you. We can trade stickers off. I have stickers all over my microwave, my coffee maker, all my other tools in here. I love promoting other people's uh, uh, businesses and stickers um, from the different brands like Knife Kits, uh, True Grit, uh, Black Rock Coffee Company, whatever. So if you would like a sticker from me or would like to send me one of your stickers, I'd be more than happy to. And also flags. For my other veterans out there, I am looking for a custom 3-5 flag, because I, I was part of 3-5, uh, 3rd time, 5th Marines. I would love to get a custom 3-5 flag, whether it's the old school or the updated one. Um, if anybody knows of a good company, whether it's a better known company or just a really good veteran friendly company, comment down below, let me know. All right, now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna bring my blade where I wanna start the bevels. So about right here, so I can establish a recalso. Re Establishing a plunge line and the initial belt. six years I'm no master by any means uh, I'm still an amateur per se and if you don't pay attention to your forge you will burn a little bit of your metal which is no big deal because I'm gonna do a pretty cool design feature to it pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a Jason Knight style shark fin to it give it a really cool look so that way I can get rid of that burnt metal this is what happens you're not paying attention you're talking you're having too much fun and if it gets concentrated on the heat of where the flame comes out of you'll burn your metal so don't make a rookie mistake so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put it back in the forge turn down the heat a little bit to get a nice red hot or red heat and then I'm just gonna do a couple make sure it's nice and straight stick it back in the forge normalize it which means heat it up to uh, uh, non-magnetic stick it back out put it in the vise normalize it so that way I can get ready to do the profile grind get it ready for heat treatment all right so now what I'm doing is uh, just heating it up to uh, uh, critical temperature or non-magnetic temperature uh, it's pretty much the same concept of when you're heat treating uh, a, uh, a knife uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just doing a, a normalizing cycle. So after forging, you'll have hot spots and stress in your brain structure. So if you normalize it first, it'll help alleviate the stress and realign the, the grains. So when you go to grind and drill, it runs your, uh, lessens your chance of uh, causing stress fractures and cracking or breaking your uh, metal. So back in the stop 
stick it to it. Now I can turn this off. And then put this in here. Alrighty. So let that cool down. And uh, they'll be ready to grind it. Alright, so now that it is normalized once, I'm done forging it. I'm just gonna do a quick profile grind on it just to true it up. And then I will slap the magnets onto the handle and I'll get that distal taper nice and flat and trued up. And even though it's not heat treated, you still want to keep it somewhat cool. One, it helps where it's not over, you know, too hot for your hands to handle, but also you don't run the chance of overheating your uh, metal. Alright, so I just did a quick little, quick little design change from where I stated earlier that I kind of burnt just the edge of the spine. So I got almost a Japanese style K-tip going on, but it's still very much the essence of a nice hunting knife, a uh, nice preparing knife, EDC style. Um, it, it, I, I kind of got like that Jason Knight looking little shark fin to it, the nice K-tip. So all in all, it's turned out pretty sweet. Now that I got this distill taper, I'm sticking it to the magnets here. I'm just gonna true it up, make sure it's flat, get it ready. Uh, some people will measure and they'll mark and they'll get it 100% perfect. I like to eyeball everything, get it as close to the eye as possible. It just makes it for a, a little bit more of a hands forged, a hand uh, made style versus a machine style. So, work the way down. So now that I got the tapered, all nice, flat, trued up, I'm gonna take some blue dicum. Yeah, blue dicum. This is just a machinist layout die. Um, you can use Sharpie. I've, I've used Sharpie for a long time. Uh, just now get into blue dicum. Nobody wants that red dicum around here, right? ain't that right? But uh, get some blue dicum. Let that dry real quick. Then I'll take these calipers here and I'll measure the thickness up near the uh, uh, bevel and uh, ricasso. And then I'll take a measurement up here at the ricasso and I'll try to find my center, scribe it on, drill out uh, or mark three holes to drill out for handle pins. All right, so, so now what I'm doing is I'm pretty much gonna establish uh, where I want the handle material to end. So I'm gonna say about right here where I like the handle material to end. So, and about over here, which I'll go ahead and put a quick measurement. So I'm gonna say three quarters from the end for my tang hole. And then I'm gonna say three quarters, or no, I'll do a half an inch from where I want the handle material in. It's gonna be my first hole. So I'll take a measurement between there. I'm at three and a half inches. So I'll shoot for center. So I'll go for an inch and three quarters. So about right here. And you wanna try to keep your holes centered. That gives a nice aesthetic look to it. So that way, when you go to slap your handles on, your pins are not off center either top or bottom because people will critique you on Facebook and then they'll tell you you're garbage. So don't be garbage. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my automatic punch and I'm just getting the hole started. These automatic punches suck. This is like the third set I've ever had. So I just get the hole initiated and then I come back with my hammer punch. Pretty much what I'm wanting to do is just kind of make that hole a little bit bigger 
so that drill bit doesn't wander when I go to drill out um, quarter inch holes for these uh, handle pins. So as you can see, it makes it for a nice hole, so it helps with the drill bit. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my cobalt quarter inch drill bit and drill these holes. And I just wanna give a huge shout out. No, they're not, they're not sponsoring me. Nobody's sponsoring me yet. Um, but I've used, I love Irwin. Irwin's kind of disappearing, unfortunately. But uh, I've used Milwaukee and I've used a couple of other cobalt brands or brands that has cobalt drill bits. But I found out this DeWalt set here works the best. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I bought two Milwaukee quarter inch drill bits, burnt them up, doing the same exact way that I've been doing things. Either it was a bad drill bit or I was having an off day, I don't know, but these DeWalt drill bits is like a hot knife through butter. Amazing. So, here we go. description go to my Instagram follow the rules check out my website I got Teespring merch which is on the header of my website check out my merchandise I got shirts men's women's tank tops hoodies uh, coffee mugs etc if you would like to buy merchandise it really will help support Dumb Sport to help grow this channel it'll make these videos possible so if you're interested better owned better operated supporting go and check it out thank you